What did you think of the president's speech today? Well, I was very pleased that he used Minnesota as an example, as I urged him to do. He used Mayo Clinic as an example, as efficient health care. He really took the speech that he gave Wednesday night in a little bit more sedate surroundings than here at the Target Center and really brought it up a notch uh, in terms of enthusiasm and excitement. Uh, because part of this is going to get the people of this country to knock on doors and make calls to get this thing done. Yeah, it would be kind of hard to tell Congress to fire up. It just wouldn't work, would it? Not only that, it's probably against some congressional rule if they start chanting. I mean, probably something for the early 1900s. I don't know. Yeah, they don't do the wave in Congress either. I found out they actually, you can't even have a chant in the Hart Building. I almost got arrested when 100 students came one day. <laughs> now, you have been, I would say, somebody who has been kind of in the middle of the debate. You haven't come down uh, like uh, Betty McCollum has and uh, Keith Ellison has saying, yeah, public option. Let's do it. That's it. Anything change on that? Where are you still sitting? Well, I've always been positive about a public option or a competitive option of some type, as the president talked about today. I've always just said it has to be hand in hand with cost reform. And I felt at the beginning of the summer that this wasn't put up front and center like it should be. And we're starting to see that change now. Next week, a number of us are going to take to the floor about how we have to do Medicare reform. My view is this. If you are going to tie a public option to Medicare rates, either explicitly or implicitly, you have to reform Medicare at the same time. And I think that that is a prudent and long-term way of looking at this, that we just can't pretend it's not happening, that Medicare is going to go in the red by 2017, or that uh, premiums are going to double in 10 years. So both uh, public option and that Medicare reform can work together to get better health care for people. Right, because currently what I've heard you say and other people say is if we were right now with Medicare, Minnesota gets penalized for doing good things because we're watching costs and therefore we don't get as much money. Is that right? Yeah, and it's outrageous, not just for our state, but for the whole country. How are we ever going to bring the cost savings the president wants to do in Medicare if we continue to reward certain state systems that are just adding more and more tests, as the president pointed out, instead of emailing each other the results, or uh, that are not organized with a primary care provider and a number of specialists. Uh, there's one great example of a, of a HMO down in the southwestern part of the country that actually has instead of having doctors see reams of patients, uh, they had nurses see them and then have two endocrinologists, these are diabetes patients, oversee it. Nurses see them actually more often than the doctors did. Results go up to the endocrinologist. They adjust what the results are. They saved a lot of money and they got much higher quality and the patients were happier. They get punished under the existing reimbursement system. That is just wrong and that's what I'm talking about here. If something like that was reformed, if that got as put in as part of this bill would the, and there's a public option, would you be behind something like that then? Oh, yes. I mean, I've always said that. It's just that if I don't push this cost issue and tie it into the other things that we need to do, it's going to be very difficult because the high-quality, low-cost states are really a minority in the country, and we have to push because it's better for the whole country. Because a lot of the, the, the very liberal side of uh, the progressive side of the Democratic Party has been a little bit upset because I haven't heard you say, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah but, and, I, and I understand that. But I think when they listen to me, they understand where I'm coming from, that I have never uh, voiced opposition, that I'm simply saying, let's have this go hand in hand together and we'll have a much better system. Okay. Senator Klobuchar, okay. thank you so much for thank stopping you. by. All right. Okay. There. We, we waited. We got, we got our interview. Thank you so much. Uh, that's wrapping up our coverage here from the Target Center. Uh, it's been uh, a, a very interesting day, a very historic day, as the president comes here and delivered a health care address that really got people fired up, as uh, Senator Klobuchar indicated. This was an address that was pretty much the same themes of what he expressed in his uh, address to Congress. There wasn't really anything different about what he said in terms of the substance, but he added personal stories, he added some excitement, he got people, as he said at the end of this whole thing, fired up.